Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with the News Cartridge for Friday, September 14th, 2018. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I woke up today and I didn't feel terrible, and now I can't wait to do today's show. And I had a little scare trying to record today's episode because the fan in the laptop stopped spinning. Thankfully, though, I fixed it and everything's working normally. Just an FYI, too, I won't be doing a game giveaway this week because there weren't too many episodes, and I forgot to announce the game. But next week, I'll be giving away Kona, a survival detective game, so be sure to leave a great comment if you want to win. Don't forget the usual timestamps along with with their corresponding reference links for all stories today can be found in the description below. Before any news, we have four freebies today, starting with some DLC for the 3D platformer, A Hat in Time. This one's only good for the next few hours, so be sure to act quickly if you own the game. Then Ubisoft is hosting a free weekend for The Division, but only over on Uplay. But if you'd rather just stick to Steam, then how about trying Day Monocle, an early access survival game, it's free to play until Sunday. Then technically this isn't a freebie, but I didn't know where else to put it, the creators of The Culling have relaunched the game as The Culling origins and free to play. You should have absolutely no trouble finding something new to play this weekend if you're a PC gamer. Sorry console gamers. Don't worry though, most of today's news is console stuff so I hope that makes up for it. So then let's start today by talking about the Nintendo Switch online subscription features and holy hell Nintendo, I have no idea what the fuck you guys are trying to do lately. The big news going around the internet today is about the Switch's cloud save feature which is some bullshit. If your subscription were to happen to run out, you will lose any cloud save data you had stored. This compares to Sony, who does require a PS Plus subscription to back up your save data to their cloud, but gives a six-month grace period after it runs out. And then Microsoft, who surprisingly has the best policy of them all, allowing for cloud saves regardless of your subscription status. Both, of course, allow you to back up your save data offline via a USB thumb drive. Nintendo claims this is to avoid save file manipulation, which I feel is completely missing the point, because if it's a single-player game, why why shouldn't you manipulate your save data if you want to? If I want to modify Breath of the Wild to give Link a hundred hearts, then I should be able to do that. And second, there's already plenty of evidence of people cheating in Splatoon 2, and the cloud save feature hasn't even been rolled out yet, so obviously Nintendo's on top of that. This coupled with Nintendo saying not all games will support cloud saves, especially already existing games, I'm failing to see where there's any value in this. There is some good news because they have revealed the other 10 NES games that will come with your subscription including Baseball, Tecmo Bowl, Yoshi, Ghosts and Goblins, Pro Wrestling, Excitebike, Gradius, Ice Hockey, River City Ransom, which is a better Double Dragon, by the way, and then last and certainly least... Double Dragon. Other than Double Dragon, this is actually not a bad list of games joining others like Super Mario 3, The Legend of Zelda, and Donkey Kong Jr. Nintendo says more games are coming with a few released each month, including Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, and Super Dodgeball. Well, at least that's something- or wait, why- why is there another headline- Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. That's right, just like Microsoft who tried to impose this for the Xbox One but caught so much blowback they changed this dumbass policy, your Switch will need to connect to the internet once a week in order to play the old NES games you are already paying for. Besides, it's not like people ever go an extended period of time without accessing the internet. This just in, an earthquake in Hokkaido, Japan left millions without electricity for several days, and Hurricane Florence is currently pummeling the east coast of the United States, forcing many people out of their homes and into public shelters. Shelters. Look, I get that these are extreme cases and they don't happen very often, but when natural disasters occur, the ability to play games can provide some comfort when you're displaced from your home, and for Nintendo to gate that off on a weekly basis has no basis in reality. This is one of those things that Nintendo had better change quickly, and by change, I mean get rid of it completely. This next one is not the worst thing about this whole ordeal, but it's the one that pissed me off the most. Nintendo is releasing these NES-style Joy-Con controllers that look just tacky and awful, and they are 60 fucking dollars. Let me say that again. They are 60 fucking dollars for some of the most uncomfortable mass-produced controllers ever designed. I even support the idea of using the old NES controller to play those games, but not for 60 dollars just so you can charge them on your Switch. I would have much rather had a small micro USB charger than the rail connector across the top. But that is isn't even the worst part about these abominable things, get ready for the kicker because you can't even order them unless you're subscribed to the online Switch service. Isn't that great for the people who may want to buy them for a loved one during the holiday season? Look, just because I think they're terrible doesn't mean somebody else wouldn't want them. Nintendo, I, I, I don't even care if you want to overcharge for them at $60, but for the love of Gaben, 
don't charge admission for people to buy your shit. The Nintendo Switch online service will cost anywhere from four US dollars per month to eight US dollars for three months and $20 for a whole year, with an additional family membership available for $35 a year. We still have more Switch news, as Epic revealed today, Fortnite will not require an online subscription. So hey, a silver lining. Thank you very much, Epic. This is very nice of you. The cult classic Katamari Damacy is coming to Nintendo Switch later this year on December December 7th in the form of Katamari Damacy Reroll. I've gotta say, this is one of my favorite games of all time, and even better still, it's coming to PC on the same day. Then we have the free-to-play Warframe, announced for Nintendo Switch, coming in two months on November 20th. And then Assassin's Creed Odyssey from Ubisoft is coming to the Switch too, and it's my understanding this will not be a cut-down version. Wow, compared to the Wii U, it's almost like the Switch is a serious gaming platform. There is a catch though, it's only releasing in Japan for now, with no plans for a Western release just yet and it will be streamed from the cloud. One of the reasons it's only coming to Japan is because Assassin's Creed Odyssey will be a pay-as-you-play title, meaning you can either own the game for two years for 75 US dollars or at a daily rate of $6.50. This is a very similar business model to Resident Evil 6 which also released only in Japan. And just like that, that is all the Nintendo news for today. Holy crap that was a lot. Moving on from there we do have a couple of release announcements with Bethesda saying they are currently working on, among other things, Wolfenstein Wolfenstein 3, which is a completely separate title to Wolfenstein Young Blood. No idea when this game will be announced, much less when a release window will be. But we do have The Bard's Tale 4 Borrows Deep releasing a PC on September 18th. Moving on from there, Blizzard is currently hiring for a mystery project, looking for a senior level designer for a first person game they are currently working on. Some are suspecting this could be an expansion for Overwatch, or even have something to do with an unannounced Diablo game Blizzard is also supposedly working on, but there's no hard evidence that the two are related. What do you think this could be and why? Please share your thoughts down below. This next one is just fucking laughable because 2K is asking the US government to take on China regarding their game ban currently going on. If you're unaware, earlier this year, developers had to submit a form to the Chinese government in order to have their game approved for sale. Then a few weeks ago, they halted all approval. 2K's Strauss Zelnick sees a problem with Chinese game companies able to freely do business here in the US. But if a US company wants to do business over in China, they have to have approval. And currently, no approvals are happening. But I just want to ask Mr. Zelnick, if he has been paying attention to any of the political climate going on in my country lately, and I, I don't think that my country is worried about selling games in China right now. Especially after the president just said that Democrats made up a death toll in Puerto Rico to make him look bad. I... Uh, video games are on the back burner. By the way, that all happened yesterday, and I'm not going anywhere near the shitstorm that happened today in my government. Finally, let's talk about this, because it's somehow less of a clusterfuck. Twitch.tv has hired Katrina Jones as its first ever head of diversity and inclusion. And holy crap, I don't want to talk about this either. <laughs> well, the good news is, is that there really isn't much to say, because what her job is, is not exactly detailed by any of the articles I've read, other than to disrupt bias and foster a more inclusive workspace. Now hear me out on this one. Disrupting bias is not possible because everyone has a bias on everything, and it's not exactly clear how she will foster a more inclusive workspace. Now the reason why I feel uncomfortable talking about this is because, and I know this will get misconstrued, I would rather just have diversity happen naturally, and when choosing somebody for a job, I don't care who does it as long as they can do it well. I guess if Twitch feels as though this is necessary, good for them, but personally, I don't know what this will accomplish, if anything. Once again, it's time for Monday's game releases, because I'm off for the next few days, because I, I've got to figure out what the fuck a Kanye West Roblox is. I have no clue. For PC, we only have one game again, and it is Poverty is a Choice. What a happy title. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you on Monday. And what do you call a cow with a twitch? Beef jerky. Dandruff, you run all these jokes into the ground. Beef. Click over here to watch Monday's episode, which is about EA refusing to comply with Belgium gaming law. Little update on that. They have been sued. That link is in the description down below. Click over here to subscribe to my wonderful, wonderful channel. Thank you. See you on Monday. Go play some games.